people aren't fully aware of the impact of COPD. For instance, regarding mortality, it's either the fourth or fifth leading cause of death in Canada. Globally, the incidence of COPD deaths is twice as high as it is from lung cancer. It's estimated that 1.6 million Canadians live with COPD, a slowly progressive respiratory disease that causes the airways of the lungs to be inflamed and become obstructed or blocked. Patients with COPD describe a variety of symptoms, and that often makes it difficult to establish the diagnosis or to think about it. Often a cough, occasionally repeated chest infections, shortness of breath, I can't do something, I'm limited in my activities, and then there's a spectrum of those symptoms depending upon disease severity. Patients with COPD almost uniformly experience shortness of breath or what we call dyspnea. Initially, it can only occur with activity. So patients might not be able to do a certain activity or task, might not be able to play with their grandchildren. And so they may limit that type of activity. If the disease progresses, it becomes so significant that it can occur at rest and become disabling so that patients are almost too short of breath to talk. My name is Dale Roach. I'm 72 years old and I've been married for 52 years. I live in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. I felt like someone had a, a bear hug on me that were just squeezing my lungs and my chest where I, I just, regardless of what I did, I could not get a deep breath of air. Very scary. COPD can be tricky to diagnose if you don't think about it. While we have a very simple test that is the gold standard for making the diagnosis, patients and my colleague, physicians and other healthcare providers, often don't think of the disease or they attribute the symptoms to some other cause. I'm putting on weight, I'm getting older, I'm lazy. We know that COPD is underdiagnosed. I, I, I made that mistake by five years. And, and quite frankly, that could have cost me my life. Some causes of COPD are inherited. There's a condition called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency that can be a, a cause of COPD at an early stage and in very severe forms. The diagnosis, when thought about, is confirmed by genetic testing, simple blood test. And what it does is it provides us with a known cause for which there is some therapy that can specifically target that genetic abnormality. Alpha-1 lung disease should be suspected in early onset of COPD, patients who have not smoked or have smoked very little. It should also be suspected if there is a certain pattern of emphysema that shows up on a chest X-ray. Rob Cameron was diagnosed with emphysema at age 47. My doctor questioned the original diagnosis of emphysema uh, because I didn't have the normal risk factors uh, that would be associated with emphysema and uh, at my age it was unexpected and uh, luckily for me uh, my family physician uh, had a little bit of a knowledge of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and had me tested. Rob was fortunate. Lack of awareness for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency or AAT leads to long delays in diagnostic testing. Subsequently, lifestyle and treatment choices with potentially positive effects on prognosis may be postponed. If you are diagnosed by your physician with COPD, I really would encourage you to ask them uh, if they don't bring it up themselves uh, to test you for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency as well. I'm very grateful that my family physician did have the knowledge and the understanding to properly diagnose my condition. The known incidence of COPD attributable to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is perhaps two or three percent. But I think that also lowballs what the actual incidence is because we don't test enough. So in any individual who is young or severe disease, at a minimum they should be tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And some would say that any patient diagnosed with COPD should be tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency at the outset. Regardless of the cause of COPD, Dr. Marson stresses that diagnosing patients early on may offer the best chance at mitigating the substantial morbidity and mortality associated with COPD. We want to diagnose COPD very early. For instance, if someone is still cigarette smoking or other exposures in the workplace, we can minimize that so that the ongoing risk is eliminated. 
but also we can offer therapies, effective therapies that can reduce shortness of breath, that can improve activity limitation and prevent infective and more serious consequences of the disease. The Lung Association is a leading organization and trusted resource in Canada, working to promote lung health and prevent and manage lung disease. The Lung Association has four pillars and these pillars act as a foundation for our work. The four pillars are health promotion, education, research, and advocacy and government relations. And the Lung Association's mission is to improve lung health one breath at a time. People with COPD often feel alone. So in response to this, it's imperative that we have a wide variety of tools, resources, and programs that teach people how to best live well with COPD. COPD is a chronic condition for which we have very effective medicines. But other aspects of therapy, what we call non-pharmacologic, are also effective. So this would include smoking cessation if one still continues to smoke, vaccinations, pulmonary rehabilitation, uh, education and becoming very aware and an informed patient, and then finally, ability to lead a normal life. After my diagnosis, I was Quite, quite shocked and, and really looking for some answers. I, uh, I attended a, a first day class kind of thing and uh, turned out incredible. I mean, it's been six years now and it's definitely saved my life. If I could only pick one intervention, the exercise is the most effective out of all that we offer. It reduces shortness of breath, it improves walking distance, it decreases anxiety, depression, and it decreases the frequency of exacerbations. And this is across the spectrum of disease. In fact, patients who are most significantly impaired tend to benefit the most from participation in an effective pulmonary rehabilitation program. I was, I was so afraid that I was gonna die. My exercise class was the most important thing to me. Rather than a, we're going to the gym to do exercises, it's a social event. We're exercising with our friends. The, the main program is we have exercise, we have diet, we have education, and the education, you know, basically how to administer our medications. Little things like uh, making sure your airways are open. People with COPD often require prescribed inhaled medications. This is really important in helping them breathe more effectively and feel better. However, Learning how to use these prescribed inhaled medications are very challenging. So as a result, the Lung Association has created several resources online that show patients and teach patients with COPD how they can properly use these medications so the medications are more effective and so patients can feel better. This is a disease, a condition where taking the medication regularly helps not only today in preventing symptoms of shortness of breath, and activity limitation, but also down the road, weeks down the road, in reducing the risk of flare-ups and acute exacerbations of COPD. I don't know, I've heard some people say it feels like trying to suck air through a straw. I think it's worse than that because the, the, the harder you gasp, the harder it is on your body, the worse it feels. There are many gaps in the appropriate assessment and management of COPD. So patients with diagnosed COPD are often managed with therapy. But I think we need to ensure that it is the best therapy, it's optimal therapy. So I tell my healthcare providers, my colleagues and patients alike, we need to raise our expectations. Once the diagnosis is established, then we look at the consequences. So for instance, how short a breath someone is. And we may use scales such as the Medical Research Council, the MRC or the modified MMRC scale. We can also assess how far someone can walk. We use something called the six minute walk test. Simple, easy to produce, but those help us guide therapy. And I guess over the four years, my abilities changed so gradually that I, I got used to them. And so it affected my, my activities at home because I found the harder it was to breathe, the less I did and the more, I guess, muscle atrophy set in. My arms and legs were so weak that it required, I guess, a lot of oxygen to even move my arm. If I was cooking supper and, say, chopping a salad, I would get through chopping half a carrot and I would have to stop and catch my breath. 
um, if I was vacuuming the house, it would take me three or four hours. If I have been diagnosed with COPD, I want to be able to do more. I want to be able to be less short of breath. So if I can, still can't, those are important endpoints for which therapy can still be further optimized. In addition, if I'm experiencing chest infections or what we call acute exacerbations of COPD, there are many things we can do to not only treat them, but most importantly, prevent their occurrence and the severity. I think I was in ICU three times. It's not an experience I would ever want to go through again. It's, it's just not a pleasant experience. You're so sick. We have very good guidance, clinical practice guidelines here in Canada and around the world for how best to manage the disease. In fact, Canada is blessed with researchers and expertise that the rest of the world looks to. So there's no paucity, there's no absence or gap in how best to manage COPD. I, I can't imagine how everything turned out. My philosophy is that nobody can do it all. Everybody needs help. And we're, we are put here to help people. Especially with the Lung Association, they, you know, they'll make a suggestion and I'm, I'm all for it. Anytime we see a patient breathe a little bit easier, anytime we see a patient express hope, that really gives meaning and power behind what we do at the Lung Association. I want my patients with COPD to smile and I want them to smile because they're less short of breath. Patients with COPD need to fully understand their disease and be partners with their healthcare providers. Together, we can optimize the therapy so that you're able to lead the most normal life possible. But if I were gonna say one important thing, I'd ask you to raise your expectations. Expect to be less short of breath. Expect to be able to do more. Expect to not have to go to the hospital when you become sick because we can prevent that from happening. I think together we can make a big difference. Patients and family members concerned with the symptoms of COPD should speak with their health care provider or visit the website below. They can help. A special thank you to the Lung Association of Saskatchewan for their support in the development of this video. We are also thankful to our supporters who share in the commitment to improve lung health.